In the days when you couldn't drink the water, you could always rely on the Great British Pint to wet your whistle. Once in decline, local traditional breweries are now back in fashion. James Arkell is the latest generation to own Donington's Brewery, which has been quenching thirst in this part of the Cotswolds for nearly 200 years. My father was a terrific man and he, he passed on the business to me. And, um, and his father and his father. For 100 years, beer was the staple drink of everybody. Every night of the week they went to the pub and drinking 10 pints because, you know, it was very good for you. Flushed the system out, got rid of all that day's sweat. It was wonderful. And we used to make beer called table beer. And table beer was the weaker beer that you ran off, which is really what people drank most of the time. Every brewer needs a good supply of water. The spring that feeds the brewery gives the beer its unique flavour. So this is the lake and the River Dickler comes in from the right and it goes out through the mill race, right beside the brewery, through the water wheel down the other end there. But the water we use comes straight out of this hill into this collecting vessel here and then we draw it into the brewery and use it for brewing. And you know, in the hottest of summers, it has never dried up, which is fantastic because without this, we wouldn't have a brewery. I love the actual building. It's a working museum. It's crammed full of machinery, as old as James's great-grandfather's original recipe. I mean, the wonderful thing is you are making something in beer. I mean, you know, beginning of the day you start with raw materials, and then at the end of the day you've got something that people want. It is an art form, and it's actually lovely to be making something, something that next week you know, one of those pubs out there, customers will say, beer's good this week, and that is a real thrill. James learned his craft as a young man from his cousin. Like many artisan brewers, the team here follow a hundred-year-old family recipe, mixing yeast, barley and hops to produce subtle flavours. Marvellous. Roger is the head brewer, in charge of making 5,760 pints every week. The process starts with milling the malt to break up the barley husks. Next is mashing, when water is added to extract the flavour from the barley. Now the liquor and the barley are mixing, this will produce 72 9 gallon barrels of beer, which uh, makes a lot of beer. We're extracting the liquor from the mash tun above us. It comes down into the underback. From here, it's being pumped by a mechanical pump driven by the water wheel up into a copper. The liquor and the uh, malt have been mixed. We've got them into the copper now, and the boiling is just about to commence. So, what I'm going to do is turn the steam on about half a turn, which gives us a little bit of a boil. Copper is a good conductor of heat, so the beer reaches boiling point quickly. I'm going to give it a nice stir before I put the hops in, just to make sure that they get a really good move round here when they go in. And these are going to prevent it boiling over the top and also create a break within the copper, which will make the beer even clearer when it comes out. But I need to put them in now to prevent it foaming. Wonderful, isn't it? Who said it was science? The hops that actually go into the copper are different to the ones that we put later on in but you get some aroma coming through. So as you can see, we're coming up to a steady boil. Look at that, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> this copper is well over 100 years old, and judging by some of the welding on it, it's probably older than that, and it's probably leaked in that time as well, but it's still working, that's the main thing. Now that noise now, you can hear, is what we're looking for. That's nearly perfection. What we're doing is sterilising and, and clarifying the beer, so we then get a sterile, clear wort going into the hop back. The penultimate stage is adding hops for flavour and aroma. And finally, yeast is added to start the beer fermenting. This is last week's brew, so it's been in here for seven days. It uh, is now ready to come out and be wrapped off into barrels. What a difference uh, a day makes. The yeast is working away in here, bubbling away, and uh, this is where it all happens, converting the sugar into alcohol. They produce three types of beer, and everything is taste tested before it leaves for the pubs. It's a hell of a job, really, isn't it? 
It's one of those tasks that we just have to force ourselves to do. No, we sample it to make sure it tastes right, its clarity is good, it smells all right, because you can have things that do go wrong. You know, the yeast hasn't worked, or it isn't clear as it should be, or the fermentation's wrong. So what we send out from here is absolutely fantastic. But a good beer needs to be kept well, so James tours the local pubs, checking on the cellars and cleanliness of the pipes. But there's only one real test. That's great. Thanks, Craig. First of all, I like a nice collar on it. Looking at the head, you have to say the tighter the bubbles, the better, really. Um, so that's got a good presentation. You can see it's slightly hazy, but it's not hazy at all. It's conditioned in the beer at the top, and it's clearing from the bottom, so it'll come up slowly and gently all the way up. So I'll take a look at it there. I try not to drink my eyes, because that's we don't like customers doing that, really, but they do. We all do. And then I look at the... Smell it. It's a clean, CO2-y type, clear nose. Yeah, it's very good. Cheers, Dan. Morning. Ah, cheers. James's sons are involved in the business. He appears to have got the next generation sorted. 